what you know about that intro music. You have intro music at your job, baby. <laughs> hey, good afternoon, everybody. I have company in the studio today. Let me turn the camera around. <laughs> My very own Boo Boo. Pastor Mashanda is here taking care of some business. My niece is over here. All right. I don't know what that was all about, but we're back. Okay. So we are we are in the midst of talking about finances the last couple of weeks. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Let me know if that's better. Um, all right. Uh, and and so we've been very practical and uh, we're not not well we've been we have scripture that we're utilizing but we're not talking about our doctrinal type of subjects that we usually talk about so we are talking about just some practical things uh, regarding finances uh, as I share with you today uh, I want to come out of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 24 thank you all for the thumbs up let me, I didn't get a chance to say hello to everybody. I was running my mouth. Hello, hello, hello to Taryn. What's up, Taryn? What's up, Rainice? What's up, Janae? Sean, welcome. Sheila Goodwin, how you doing? Bruce Edwards, how you doing, man? We got Minister Ron Patterson on here. Welcome. Shakaya, welcome. My Aunt Deborah's on here. Welcome. Janae, all the way from Georgia, Welcome. I think I got her. Erica, welcome. Hey, Lakeisha. Good to have you. Well, you've been on here anyway, but I, I usually don't get to say hello to you. Hello to my mother, John Leak. Welcome. Man, y'all on here. All right. Hey, Violet. So let's get into this. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24 says, There is nothing better. There is nothing better for a man than to eat and drink and tell himself that his labor is good. All right. This is also this also. I'm sorry. This also I have seen that it is from the hand of God. Now, the purpose of, 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 of today's teaching is talking about eating economically. All right. We're talking about our money. We're talking about being. Remember, here's the whole goal. The whole goal is not being a billionaire or, or a millionaire. By the way, if you do that, great. Uh, but. The whole goal is to be financially free, right? Financial freedom simply means this, that there is no anxiety where money is concerned in your life. My God, no anxiety where money is concerned in your life. That's what we want to do. We want to be financially free. We have talked, we have given out all kind of nuggets regarding having your emergency fund, uh, the, the importance of your credit. Uh, what else have we talked about? We've talked about the, uh, what else have we talked about? We got into writing your vision. Remember, that was the first thing, making sure that you have a vision and that it's written down, which is very, very important. See where you stand. Remember, we said, I am here, where we looked at our net worth, what we own minus what we owe. What we earn, uh, own minus what we owe. That gives us our net worth. What else we talk about? We've obviously talked about what do we do when we first get money. We talked about uh, the tithe and understanding the tithe and understanding offerings. We talked about saving strategically. 
having that, that $1,000 emergency fund. We talked about diminishing your debt. And one of the strategies that we did talk about was that the debt snowball, I can't get it out. And then finally, we talked about invest, investigating your insurance. We talked about the importance of insurance and how we establish estates for the next generation through uh, insurance, uh, specifically life insurance. So a lot of money things that we've talked about. And uh, what, yesterday we hit on some things, but today we're just talking about eating economically. Just, you know, not spending a whole bunch of money on eating. All right, so a couple different things I want to throw out at you when we talk about your money and food. Now, I would, I would venture to say this, that if you were to look into your, uh, uh, look on, let's say, look online, because most people don't have their checkbooks anymore. Look online, of which, as I share with you before, I do every day. You should look on. You should look at your your statement every day. Why should you look at it every day? Because of fraud. People are will try to steal your money. It's not just that you're you know that you're worshiping your your account. You want to make sure things are right, the right thing, the proper things are going through. But also when you look at your account every day, then it it allows you to look and see what you've been spending your money on to make sure that you are staying focused. I actually learned that. Um, I don't know how I got that. That was just something that just came normally, uh, naturally to me. I think I probably got it from my mother, though, because I think I saw her doing that with a checkbook uh, all the time. So, you know, it's just something that I do. And then, of course, you know, even where, where the church is concerned, you know, we look at it daily, making sure that things are the way that they're supposed to be. That's what you should do. You should be looking at your, your, uh, your income statement or your online statement every day go on there see what's going on and to see how much money here's what I want you to do you know every once in a while <laughs> every once in a while um, I throw a nugget at you that that may be life-changing here's what's life-changing that I'm gonna ask you to do check this out I want you to go through your statement for the month of June last month last month and I'm going to ask you to do something that may shock you. I want you to add up, get a calculator. I'll get your phone out, calculate, add up as, uh, how much money you spent on groceries, anything involving food, anything involving food. I don't care if it's groceries. I don't care if it's, you know, McDonald's, anything eating out, restaurants, fast food, groceries. Uh, you bought something from uh, Speedway and you knew it was food. It wasn't gas. Anything involving food, I want you to add it up and calculate it and see how much you spent in the month of June on food. In most cases, it is going to shock you. You think that you don't have the money that you that you really have. You, you have some money. It's some money there. You just got to see how much you've been spending on food. Food is probably one of our major purchasing items that, that, we, that we spend a lot of money on needlessly that's why today's focus is eating economically because we do it needlessly now check this out um here are some here are some strategies make a pre-printed list of the items that you buy on a regular basis somebody did it this morning oh okay well you put it in there too you you put the whole amount and everything well god bless you okay um make a pre-printed list of the items that you buy on a regular basis from the grocery store. Have that list in your phone or on paper or whatever, all right? What is it that you that you know each time I go to the grocery store, I'm usually going to buy? Always have that list, all right? Because those are like those staples of what you usually, you know, you and your family usually need in order to, you know, make sure that you're eating throughout the week. So always have that pre-printed list. What's the purpose of the pre-printed list? You stay, you stay focused. You're not going in there just buying anything that you see and, oh, I gotta kind of feel like I want this. No, stay focused. Now, remember, we're not talking about uh, these strategies even in other areas. It's not about you living your life and you just can't have any fun. That's not what it's about. It's about getting to the point where we're financially free. And then once you develop those habits, you develop that mindset. Now, yeah, you're going to splurge. Absolutely. But we were trying to, some people are in, 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 in situations that are worse than others. 
So we're trying to begin developing some strategies that will help you to become uh, have be a better financial situation and ultimately become financially free. Number two, don't go to the grocery sh uh, store hungry. Man, have I done that. And that's not a good thing. All right. Don't go to the grocery store hungry. I know these are things that you probably heard. And these are things that have, you know, what does this got to do with the Bible? Well, uh, you know what? It just has to do with life. OK, it has to do with good stewardship. So indirectly, it does have something to do with the Bible. But we're just talking about how to live as well. All right. Clip coupons, of which I'm not good at. I, that's not something that I do. Clip cu coupons. We have some friends, uh, uh, actually family members and friends that are really, really good with clipping coupons. They save a lot of money. They get a lot of stuff on discount. Uh, that's something that, that I, may, I may try to get into. But I know that that's a good strategy. Clip coupons. Buy in bulk when it makes sense. Now, the key to that is when it makes sense. Don't just go buy in bulk, but buy in bulk when it makes sense. You know, our, our, our family, our household is beginning to decrease now, so we don't have to buy as much in bulk because the kids are moving out and stuff like that. So, you know, it doesn't make sense to buy some things in bulk. Now, yesterday I did go out and bought some um, large kitchen trash bags in bulk, by the way. I know that has nothing to do with this, but it saved me a lot of money because we're going to have plenty of trash bags for a long time. So anyway, uh, cook in bulk. What do I mean by cook in bulk? Here's the thing. If, if at all possible, prep your meals. Prep your meals. Cook in bulk. Um, you know, uh, have that time on Sunday or Monday or whatever, whenever, whenever you do it. But, but cook for the week if you're able to. Cook for the week if you're able to. Why? Because here's the goal. Here's the goal of saving money. The goal is to take your lunch four out of five days of the week when you go to work. That's a good goal. If you take your lunch four out of five days per week, you're probably going to end up saving a minimum, a minimum of $40 a week from eating out from, for lunch if you go out to lunch where you work, right? Uh, what is another goal? Eat dinner at home five out of the seven days a week. See, again, this is a good balance because you're able to have some time to, you know, go out, eat out. You know, it's fun to eat out. You know, you get out in a new environment, sit down, talk, eat out with your spouse or with friend or whatever, whomever. So you go out, you eat, you have a good time a couple nights a week. But five nights a week, eat at home. Save that money. Save that money. Now, we've already talked about what you're going to do with the money. So we know we have the plan on what we're going to do with the money, but save that money and don't waste it, right? So those are just a couple of, of good uh, uh, strategies there. When eating out, because i got two minutes. When eating out, listen to this. Um, Predetermine your ordering limit. Predetermine your ordering limit. That's something I do all the time. I always know what the ordering limit is. I already know what my wife likes. I already know what she's going to do. I have the ordering limit, and therefore, hopefully, we don't go over that. Um, sometimes split a meal. I'm going to look over at my wife real quick. That's what we we said we were going to start doing that. We're going to start, you know, getting a nice meal and split a meal. I think yeah, what does split a meal do? Think about it. It saves money, but also we really don't need to eat the huge portions that we that we buy. Unless, which is my next strategy, you buy the whole meal, eat half there, take half home, and then eat the other half the next day. See, I'm just throwing nuggets at you. I, I at what uh Tova, what Bombs. I'm just just throwing bombs out, you know, just for you to 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 hear, to consider. The, the, you know, these are not things that you have to do. It's your life. It's your money. But ultimately, just some ideas, some ideas on how to eat economically. Um, you know, when you're shopping, uh, you know, you do the grocery shopping. You know how to shop. You look at. You know, here's the truth about that. Real quick. You know, there's no, there's no difference between the name brand and like the Kroger brand. If you look at the back, it's the same contents. It's just a different label. And so why pay more for the name brand? Now, there's some things that I won't skimp on, like cereal. I will not skimp on cereal. We will buy the real cereal. But other than that, you know, you can, you can kind of skimp on some of those things. So 
Anyway, make it fun, y'all. You know, have, utilize wisdom with your money when you're eating. Keep some of these strategies in mind. These are things that will help us. These are things that will help us to, um, to begin to put monies aside because, again, if you already have your budget, then you already know where your money is going to go. It's going to go towards savings. It's going to go towards investments. It's going to go towards paying off uh, those credit cards. Uh, remember, with those credit cards, you don't want to spend, you don't want to carry over to the next month more than 10% of the balance. Because every time you do that, your credit score is going down, 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 down. And now you're going to be paying much more interest on stuff like your home or your cars, right? So use the money to pay down those credit cards. Use the money. I said invest. I said save credit cards. You know, you may have student loans that you're paying off. Um, use the money to be a blessing to someone else, right? See, all of these strategies that we're talking about when we talk about eat economically, uh, we talked about maximizing your minutes, making sure that we, we're utilizing our time to get our life planned out. What is that going to do? It's going to allow us to be better managers, better stewards, so that we can then be blessed to be a blessing. Listen to this. Much of the blessing that God has given you, you already have. We always have to make sure that we're being wise with it. And as we are being wise with it, then we are showing ourselves faithful for more, right? The mindset, we're talking about the renewing of the mind, transformation by the renewing of the mind. As we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds and we are able to handle a little bit, then what we are doing is that not only proving to God, but we're utilizing the wisdom and skills to grow into something more but we've got to master where we are. That's why we're talking about this stuff. Master where you are, then you will, it, it's, a, it's an automatic. It's not even like anybody can hold you back. You will be, you will promote yourself. You will be promoted by the Lord unto, into the next uh, level when you master where you are by being a good steward, all right? So that is it for today. I want you guys to have a very, very, very great weekend. Um, I do want you to, uh, don't forget, Sunday at 11 a.m., we have service. We're here, Facebook, DMI Dayton. Um, I'm going to be talking about Faith's Foes, F-O-E-S, Faith's Foes on, uh, on, on Sunday. It's some good stuff. Uh, we want to continue to increase our faith so that we can walk in what God has for us. So join us Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Again, everybody have a very blessed Friday, a very blessed Saturday, and I will see you Sunday. God bless. Bye-bye.